Good morning. It's pretty early here. Yeah. Early? It's pretty early here. Yeah. It's twirly. Too early. A bit like a pig's tail. Get it? Twirly. This is Werewolf the Podcast and we are on our latest episode. We're carrying on with... Well, we're near the end now. I think we've got this episode and maybe one more and then we've finished the series. Yay! I hear you say and so do I. Please support us. It's really nice if you do because we can do things like eat and like, you know, have a house instead of a cardboard box and all that kind of stuff, which is lovely. So to all those that are supporting us, you are the greatest because you are. You can find links in the description with the podcast that will support all of us. So go for it. You can join us on Werewolf the Podcast, the group from Facebook. You can find us on Instagram and um, TikTok and is it called X now or Twitter or whatever. So come and join the party. Honestly, you lunatics deserve to find other lunatics to speak with. Okay, let's get back to the story. Well, sorry, we're getting close to the end of this, this long running segue, this super series of sort of things, and uh, a lot of shit has happened, I mean, a lot of shit has happened that we weren't really prepared for, (laughs) I had no idea that this was, you know, what was happening for most of it. No, seriously, I know it's difficult to believe it just spewed forth from my single-fingered typing digit. As I am this drama's chief documenter and narrator, that kind of surprises me. This story was written with no idea where it would conclude, so thanks for hanging in there and supporting us. It took the devil to find the end, but... Honestly, she has all the best stories, doesn't she, really? We have a host of characters and those who play them. Let's see who's in today's broadcast. Well, firstly, and I suppose most importantly, we have Will and Fen. The man and the wolf soul. Will's the man and Fen's the wolf soul. These two, I was going to say people, but they're not. These two things live together and wander the earth. And when they combine, they can become a wolf or a werewolf and have much mischief in doing so. Fen is the wolf soul, and after 2,000 years of being around people, he kind of realises that not his cup of tea, but they are often his well-cooked sirloin steak, if you know what I mean. Fen and Will are probably played by the most outstanding actor ever. I mean... I don't want to sound arrogant, no, that is not true, well, I will sound arrogant, because I am, but it must be obvious to you out in listener land that I am a method actor, because I am really they, and they are really me, and those type of thingies, no? Then there is the 13th century knight's now professor, he is immortal and straightforward, Gregory Alexander Sharp plays and imagines Simon de Montford. Many discussions are held between us on how this story goes, and his ideas fuel the nonsense as much as my own. As a fellow writer, and being much more talented than myself, his novels are excellent, well-written, fictional journeys. You can get them by following the links in the description below, just right down there. Do you want to say anything, Greg? You're very kind, Fen. Thank you very much. And yet, links are indeed in the description. Some excellent works of fiction there, if I do say so myself. And what an honour and a privilege it's been to be part of this and so much fun to come up with these ideas together and then to see them come to life in this way. It's just been a real thrill. And long may it continue. Many more to come. I do hope so. Um, and, And thank you for having me. And, of course, there's Lucifer, you know... Look below, look far, no deeper than that, right there in the very depths of hell. If I have to explain Lucifer further, then things are a little poor in the education system or just in someone's knowledge base. She is the centre of all that is happening in this story. That's what it seems like at this moment, anyway. However, we have no idea how this is going to finish, so who knows what the outcome of the story is going to be if it ever ends. Probably Lucifer knows. Lucifer is played by D. Rich Sharp. 
Yes, that luscious voice is hers. Many you, many of you, <laughs> many of you mentioned the strange feeling that voice gave you, the run up and down the spine. Mm. That's the voice that the devil has, and luckily for him, Greg gets to listen to that voice as he discusses the day across the dinner table. We also have a pink glowy robed spirit, Bosworth, and Ian's old genie. He's now a retiree who has done the thing of making a magical, majestic, non-material municipality for his pub and hotel. Yeah, that was a hell of a sentence to say. A place called Phaeton. We've been there before. We even sang karaoke there. Where all the Fae are welcome. Sometimes you want to go where every fairy knows your name. A few young people, that was the Cheers theme. Hmm. Sammy and her son are here, but, well, they're no longer part of the story. They were vampiric gods trying to take over the earth and bring it back under the control of this beastly duo. They are gone now. Can the undead be dead? Can dogs... Dogs? That's God backwards, isn't it? Can gods die? In this case, yup, they can. Sally and the pups. Yeah, we Sally has arrived back from not another plane, but the other end of the universe where she was put by the devil. Well, she wasn't actually put there by the devil. The devil had to move the universe around Sally. That is how bloody-minded a young woman is. And that's why I love her. <laughs> Sounds strange, isn't it? She's played by Yvonne Pollock, and it's her that inspired me to create the character that she plays. Take from that what Yvonne is like. Hmm. Okay, back to the scene. Bosworth has granted the Professor his second wish to restrain all the werewolves present. The Professor has a job to do. He was given a second chance at life as long as he undertook a life of penance. He was given a second chance to get into the very halls of heaven. He would get to that heavenly place only if he became a, um, a good fellow. He had not been previously... I, I mean, a good fellow. I mean, you could go back and listen to the previous episodes or just spend a little time on Wikipedia to find out what he did. Well, he did a lot of killing and murders and was not really a very nice man, especially to the Jewish people. Mm, thank God things have changed. Check out Simon de Montfort. You know, he was a proper 13th century blokey bloke. He has a lot of making up to do for what he did, and that is what he is currently trying to do with our heroes. Um, I suppose they're not heroes, are they? They're quite vicious and horrible. Anti-heroes. No, no anti, no, anti-villains. That, that'll do. Will and Fen. If we go back in the way back machine, then the professor has been told how to kill the werewolf by the werewolf himself. Yeah, a bit stupid, eh? Got it straight from the werewolf's mouth, as it were. Which is also the basis of how you kill the werewolf's soul. You remove the canine teeth from the host's head and crush them. Dead host, dead soul, dead, 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 dead. Before Will told him this information, he did not know how to kill a werewolf's soul, Simon that is, and I think he would have really preferred not to know, Simon that is, as he would not have been able to make the decision he has to make now. Yeah, Simon has to make a difficult decision. It was Will's mistake. He trusted the professor. It was the first time he trusted, and maybe it will be the last. <sighs> One of those being if he actually dies, because if he actually dies, it might be his last, or he might just never trust anyone again. That's complicated, isn't it? He held the professor as an equal. He told him all. It was a mistake. Oh, I've just thought of a sentence that really applies to this situation. The professor had been given great power over Will, and with great power comes great responsibility. I'm sure I've heard that somewhere before. Come on, old chap. Let's continue with the story, shall we? The Professor. The music had ended. The dance had stopped. The part of the story where the vampire gods existed had concluded. But unlike fairy tale logic, there was definitely no happy ending. Will's story and mine continued. 
Would it be a happy ending? Unlikely, to be sure. I uh, have to do it, I'm afraid, old chap. I told the suspended man. Will was held in the air by something. The usual magic thingies, I'm afraid. I could pretend I understand these things, but if I did, would it still be magic or just science? I'd given Bosworth my second wish, and it was to restrain the five werewolves for me. Bozzy hadn't even been reticent about it. He just granted the wish. Each of the beasts, except Sally, who was already in her human form, had transformed back into their human and wolf soul duos. The human form from each pair was held in the air like Christ had been on the cross. But the crucifix in this case was invisible. Invisible crucifix. There must have been an 80s goth band called that, and if there wasn't, there bloody should have been. The gigantic wolf soul Fen had moved in front of the airborne Will. He would make me walk through him to get to my, uh, now, now sadly in a way, victim. I could walk through him, I knew, but it seemed wildly inappropriate to do so. He was a ghostly type of thing. He couldn't harm me. Well, I suppose that's not entirely true. He couldn't hurt me physically. I hesitated in front of him. I had a job to do, but the task would not be tasteful to my palate, no matter what I did. So showing those about to die respect was important to me. Hey, I'm still determining what the bloody plan is here, Simon. It's not look like it's going to be a good feel like the laddie there. What are you up to for... Well, for goodness sake. Asked Bozzy, who stood by my left shoulder. I have to take the werewolves out of the game. I've been sent an order from God. Gabriel delivered it, not two days since. I took a roll from my belt pouch, opened it, and gave it to the genie. After reading the parchment briefly, he seemed confused. Um, I don't think this really explains why you need to kill Will, Simon. It means I have no choice. It, it, it's my way to get into heaven, I told him. The genie scratched his invisible head with an invisible hand and then looked at both sides of the parchment. I know you're an intelligent bloke and everything, but... Look into this, I still don't get it, Simon. It's the only way I can be absolved of all my sins, I replied. Okay, but why does the fact that you have to follow this cheesecake recipe have anything to do with killing Will like? Ah, uh, uh, oh, so <laughs> okay, sorry, not the correct scroll, I said, a bit embarrassed about my mistake. It does make scrumptious treats, though. And there's no cooking involved either. Even I can produce excellent results, and I'm not too good at the timing thing with modern ovens. I fumbled through my belt pouch again to find the message and pass it to the genie. He took it and read the following. To get to heaven, my son, you must enfoul the unholy one. You must kill a black-hued wolf and send its soul into the pitiless gulf. Yours with love. God. Poetic to the genie. Y you see? I have no choice in this. I have to do it. I told him, evidently in some anguish. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to do it. I've somewhat taken a shine to Will and Fen, old boy. There are few people I can consider friends, but... Well, I thought we had a chance. Gosh... God really knows how to be cruel sometimes. So, you're finding it bloody hard to do killing then, are you, lad? He asked. There was a difficult silence between the genie and me. I could tell that he had more to add to the conversation, was a bit unsure of how to do so. What? I asked, a little harshly. Why didn't thou just get me to kill Werewolf with a wish? He asked. I sat and thought about it. Of course that's what I should have done. 
I like to think of myself as intelligent, so having made such a simple mistake was a little annoying. I wouldn't have had to have done anything myself. It would have just been done for me. To be honest, Bozzy, never thought of it. feel a bit foolish now. That probably would have been the answer, though, eh? Um, that'll be your third wish, then, won't it? Asked Bozzy. Um, no, I should leave that in reserve. I've... <sighs> Got a feeling, I said, turning to Lucifer, who was still with us and watching, that this might all turn out to be a bit of a farce. I may need that other one to get, you know, unstuck as it were. All right, well that's right, greatly then, lad. I tell thee what, I'm gonna pop off to home for a bit. Flissant girls get worried. I can't watch you do this. I really can't. Just give me a shout if you need me, eh? He went quiet, as if in consideration. I know it ain't my job to give advice, but I think it's appropriate in this case for you, me friend. If there's any advice I could give you, he said, that is your friend, he said, pointing at Will. He had faith in you, you know. Think about what you do. If you do this, then you can never have a friend again. It won't be fair on them, you know. No one will be able to trust you. If you do this, Simon, you are worse than her, in my eyes, he said, pointing at the figure of Lucifer. The genie then disappeared in a poof, a pink puff. A pink puff sounds better. I felt, uh, I felt a turmoil of emotions flood my brain. What was I supposed to do? Will was a murderer. A persecutor, a horror on this planet, capable of things that could not be permitted to continue. But then, on the other hand, he was also my best friend. I'd made the mistake of letting this man get close to me. Yet again, I would have to murder a friend for God. Lucifer giggled. This disturbed me. And when I turned towards her, she covered her mouth and stifled any further amusement. Oh, you look exhausted, Simon, she said as she slinked towards me and placed her index finger on my shoulder guard. All these huge decisions are based on what? Good and evil. Is it the greater good that you work towards? Are the needs of the many before the few? Or do you do this for yourself? Or do you need to do as you are told to get your reward? She faked confusion for a moment. The finger on my shoulder dragged down the armor plate before going to her mouth as though she was in deep thought. Wait, what is the greatest gift that God gives you? Hmm, free will. The ability to choose your path. <laughs> Seems that path has been chosen for you. She laughed. I sighed. She had a decent point, and my chin dropped towards my chest. I smiled, then laughed at the ridiculous, unwinnable situation I found myself in. Oh, wait a minute. You are choosing, huh? She said, as though she'd suddenly come to a moment of realization. Yes, you choose to put yourself before everyone else, right? Goodness, I almost missed that. I didn't even appreciate that you put yourself first. It's, it's all about you and your wants and needs. She smiled and stood up straight to deliver a round of applause. You are an evil, malicious, selfish bastard for God. She was impressed. Wunderbar. I suppose even he needs to have people like you to do the work that his pretty angels won't do. We all need someone willing to be violent and without personal recourse. You are a hound of heaven, <laughs> a hound of heaven, well-trained and willing to do anything to sniff an afterlife. She was being cantankerous, but I didn't care. I had no choice where and when I was born, did I? The life I was thrown into was the one I think anyone would have had prescribed to them. I was born a noble of England and as such was taught that power was the be-all and end-all, that the politics of the world was based on birth. Monarchy! Pah! 
I had to change that to gain my power. Power is what we all seek, is it not? The greatest things I regret were done at the will of others to gain power and respect. I was a young soul. I wanted to be accepted, so I did what I could to garner that acceptance. As I now am going to kill a friend. It will not be my first cold-blooded killing of a friend by these guilty hands. For some reason, I raised my palms for her to look at. It's unlikely that this will be the last. I'll kill my friend to gain my earned liberty in heaven. I turned to Fen, ignoring the woman now. Why was she always here anyway? Why was she always trying to bother me? Fen, old chap, I'm afraid there's nothing you can do to help Will now. Why was I trying to be reassuring to him? I know that you can't stop me in any way from getting to him. I'm sorry that it has to be done, but you've committed horrific acts of violence, torture, and murder alongside your human pawn. I told him, trying to justify my actions. You have been judged and condemned by those with the unequivocal power so to do. If it was not me that did this thing, then another would soon take my place. Your destiny is to die and fade from this earth. I am truly sorry. I couldn't hold eye contact with the wolf's soul. Although he wasn't quite solid physically, his eyes were like amber fires, burning from the base of somewhere far darker than I had ever been. Before you go much further, Professor, you have to hear my side of the story. I don't bloody care anymore about your side, Fen! I yelled. I don't need to know your side. I must just be happy with my loyalty to God. What he says goes. I have my orders, and I must carry them out as a soldier. I walked through the wolf's soul towards Will, who was held in the air. He was frozen in time. His eyes didn't move, he did not blink, and he was utterly trapped. Inside, I hoped that this would make the next few moments easier. I could look upon him as an object, not a person with his own inherent value. Not as my friend. Having said that, this was going to be difficult on a physical level. I didn't have the correct tools to do the job, but I would try to pull the teeth with the effort of my own bare hands. If not, then I would have to break them out with my dagger and use it as a chisel. <clears throat> Lucifer suddenly appeared beside me and I was momentarily shocked by her proximity. She held in her manicured mitt a pair of what I assumed to be medical pliers. Would not want to see the wolf suffer too much, would we? <laughs> Something was odd about this. Why was she even getting involved at this level? Would she not want to see me struggle and will be in pain from what was going to happen? Fen's voice rose in my head. Does it not make you think that there is something more to her presence than just voyeurism? He asked. Aye. Think before you do this, Simon. Think out on it. You'll regret this day more than many that have passed if you don't. Understand what is happening. Fen opined. Oh, ignore him, Simon, and get on with it. I just want it to be over with. I have other things than this waiting for my attention, you know. Pliers equals quicker work. Come on. She seems a little bit pushy, does she not, Simon? Why would she be so pushy? There has to be a lot more to this, said the wolf. I shook my head to clear it of the confusion. I had the message from God, and that was what I was going to do. I reached up to Will's unmoving mouth and opened his lips to reveal larger than normal canines. I had to slightly force his jaws apart to get my pliers into a position to hold the tooth. I set myself to do this. I closed my eyes as if that would help me do this thing. 
It took all of my willpower to comprehend what I was about to undertake, never mind actually do it. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Lucifer's face. It was transformed, ugly and inhuman. Avarice briefly flashed across those once beautiful features. Her excitement at the act about to happen was utterly apparent. And she drooled. Go on, go on, do it, go on. She was almost chanting. Still holding the tooth tight in the plier's jaws, I turned to look at the wolf's soul. His head was down, and his eyes were closed. The fire had gone from those normally amber burning pits. It almost seemed to be accepting the situation and its outcome. In the back of my mind, something begged Fen to stop me, to somehow make me not do this. It was a little something that had not bothered me for an awfully long time. It was my conscience. His head lifted, the fires relit, but it was too late. I pulled. The tooth was stuck fast, so I had to unceremonially jerk it back and forth to remove it. As I yanked, the gums split, as did Will's bottom lip, although no blood flowed. Lucifer was now too close to me. She was in my personal space and had utter glee on her once more beautiful countenance. She was so excited. She was shaking physically. Why? Why did this matter so much to her? I paused and looked deep into her eyes and was met by all the hurt in the world. It was though it was stored there and it was apparent that the hurt gave her joy. Crush it! Crush it now! She ordered in a guttural tone. And for some reason... I did. As the tooth crumbled, a burst of energy somewhat uncomfortably ran up my arm to my shoulder. It numbed it for a moment. It felt like I had lain on it, and it had gone to sleep. But soon, pins and needles made me realize all was good. So whose orders are you following then, Simon? Whose orders are you really following? Popped into my head from the wolf soul fen. Realization of the point of that pointed question struck me hard. I shook my head with a smile at the answer. I laughed and nodded at the soul. Ha 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 ha! I seem to be following hers, Fen. I smirked as I spoke. I seem to be following your orders, dear Lucifer. Is that not so? She was nonplussed as she was shook from the revelry of what was happening. Um, what? She quickly said, trying to fill an uncomfortable moment so she could think of an answer. I saw it. I felt her control fade for a moment. I... Lucifer began, but was shut down as I raised a hand to shush her. Did you hear that? I raised a hand and shushed the devil. <laughs> I did that. I now wanted to listen to what the soul would say. What are we, Simon? asked the wolf soul. It was a rhetorical question, but it aligned my mind in a new direction. We are the same. You, Will and I. We're something unnatural yet. The most natural thing that can exist. What are we? We're predators of sorts, especially on the human psyche. We survive off the lives and deaths of others. And that is a very natural thing. He paused. Have you considered that you're not a normal entity? Are you a normal entity? What are you asked to do every day? You're asked to do what is necessary, whatever is necessary, to defend those that he, he, him up there, thinks need protection. The rare, the lonely and the lost. He asks you to stop the persecution of others, yet you, and you alone, are allowed to persecute in order to do so. Do you not find that funny? 
that he allows you to do the very thing he expects you to stop. You're just a means to an end. Do you ever think you will do enough to be forgiven and given the keys to the gates of heaven? Or do you think that this may be, you know, your never-ending task? How can a persecutor ever enter heaven? Will and I are not natural. We again are, uh, well, we're predators taking joy in our work. He waited for a moment while I took this in. We know we enjoy our work and that, my friend, is the main difference between you and us. I don't think you realise how much you enjoy your work. You think you only suffer through the things you do to get the job done, to get to the point of forgiveness, yet all you do is build a greater reserve of sins through your actions. You can never be forgiven. You might think you do not enjoy what you do, but I'm afraid you do. You're a killer, you're a predator, and you like it. No more than that, more than that, you love it. You were born for it. I've seen you on battlefield. You're only truly alive when in the thick of it or when you've broken an enemy's will. We are the same. I placed a gauntleted finger on her lips. Let him speak, I ordered Beelzebub. Why do you think she's doing this? Fen asked. Lucifer pulled away from my hand and started to talk. Nope, it's not your turn, my dear. I said to the somewhat nonplussed Satan. I laughed. Because we're both friends and allies, and she cannot control us. She sees something she cannot ever have. Someone who knows and understands her and her life. The soul nodded. Oh, fuck! I yelled as I turned to the horizon, throwing the pliers as far away as possible. Oh, fuck! I raged. I'd been played by her. I'd been played all along. I stared at her now with the closest thing I had for hate for anyone. I just stood shaking my head at her as the beast inside settled. She couldn't use us, so she wanted us to destroy each other. A fight to the death in which one of us would die and the other would find it impossible to live with themselves. The wolf soul turned its majestic head towards the silent woman. She was smiling. She was smiling, damn her. I felt exhausted. I felt... Well, I felt like a fool. But I had to ask her the obvious question. Was it you, Lucy? Was it you that directed this entire farce? I asked wearily. Would you believe me if I said it was not? Would you believe me if I said it was? She smiled and shrugged. I am the eternally damned liar. Does the truth exist to me? I shrugged. Yes, it does. But it has so many possible versions. So many beautiful and possible outcomes. Such a wonderful conundrum to play with. Did I manufacture this for fun? To mess with you and your boss? Did I? Only you can guess, and that is just it. It is a guess, and for me to know, and for you to find out. She blew me a kiss and dissolved into a dissipating black smoke which was soon lost on the light winds. I fell to my knees. I still had no answer but to take Will's other tooth, to crush it and send him and Fen to. Well, wherever they would go would be wrong. Bonsworth! I yelled with all my essence. Bonsworth! The purple flowing robe suddenly arrived. Are we here, Simon? Please release them. And get me the hell out of here. I'm done. Where does the want to go? He asked. Huh? I think you know the answer to that, I said. The hooded robe nodded. Before you go, lad, can I just tell you, well bloody done, said Bosworth. I smiled as I sat on my backside in the ruin that had been created. 
How could anyone look at this as a good thing? Death and destruction were evident everywhere, and Fen had been right. I'd loved every goddamn moment of it. Thank you, I replied to the hovering djinn, and I genuinely meant it. Then 